What's up guys, welcome back to Malt Mondays. I'm Paul and this week taking a look at the Boonhaven 18 year old. So last week I reviewed the 12 year old um, and it really blew me away when I first got that bottle just how impressive it was at a $55 price point. Um, so I was, I was so enamored with it that um, a couple months ago for my birthday uh, my girlfriend actually purchased me the Boonhaven 18 year old. Now I've pre-poured my glass, and that is because some of the older whiskeys, um, and it's not true of all of them, but many of them benefit from opening up a little bit. Um, so the bottle is still relatively full, so it hasn't uh, really had too much time to breathe in the bottle, although I will say uh, when I first opened it, um, it was really closed and tight, um, and now it's a much richer and more flavorful whiskey than it originally was. So it's opened up in the bottle a little bit, but I wanted to pre-pour my glass anyway. Um, because a general rule of thumb with 18 and older whiskeys is a minute per year to kind of let them open up. And um, I, I'm, it just kind of alters the flavor a little bit. You are able to pick out more nuances in them, I find. So this has been sitting here for about five or six minutes. And that should be sufficient since it's already breathing in the bottle a bit. Um, but First, I want to take a look at this bottle. So, 46.3% ABV. Again, good job, Boonahaven. Um, they're really giving us bang for our buck here. Natural color, non-chill filtered. Um, and then on the back, they have, you know, a little bit about Isla and how it's a magical island and, you know, a little bit of marketing. Um, but, you know, then... They say, by not chill filtering our whiskey, we ensure that we can appreciate the full depths of flavors, aroma, and character that makes Bunahaven consistently award-winning single malt. Um, I really like the packaging of the Bunahavens. The dark bottle uh, really makes it so you're not trying to judge it based on color or anything else. They're pretty unassuming. They look nice. Um, they're, you know, they're not trying to get you to buy their bottle just because of some flair in the packaging or the... Um, like trying to make it look like really high end in that regard um, but it is classy you know it's got this gold labeling at the top and accenting um, so it does stand out a little bit now the Bunahaven standard whiskeys are peated to something like two or three ppm um, and it's probably just the peat that's left over in the stills from when they uh, when they distill their Kiabanak or their Tochik um, if it's peated at all, it's almost minuscule amounts. Um, I would not call this a peated whiskey. So, uh, it's a little bit unusual for Isla in that regard, but Brucolati doesn't peat their whiskeys either. So, they're not the only ones. Now, looking at this, um, it's not much darker than the 12, and that's because they're natural coloring, but most of the whiskey's color comes in early in its lifetime. So, older whiskeys. Um, you know, the color of the whiskey gets really, really dark quite quickly, and then it starts to taper off. And it also depends on the type of casks used. Um, but, you know, for an 18-year-old whiskey, natural coloring, this is uh, actually maybe on the lighter side, um, considering the Bunahaven is using sherry casks for their maturation. So, let's see how it smells. Wow. Um, so when I reviewed the 12, um, I thought that one was immediately a very heavy sherry nose. And this, I would say, is much more complex than that. Um, with this, the sherry has kind of transformed and now it's more of a honey. There's even some of the apple-y notes that you might get from a space cider. There's dark fruits in the background. A little bit of a nuttiness coming out.
And a touch of the sea salt, again, that uh, Bunahaven kind of gets from being right on the coast there. So this is, this actually almost kind of calls back to me like a Balvenny or something, where the sherry is there, but the sherry is not a sherry bomb anymore. I, I found the 12-year-old to be um, very pronounced on the sherry aspect, but this is more mature. The oak has started to give some influence as well, bringing in a little bit of vanilla. Those nuts, um, the honey. This smells incredible. Um, and where I said the 12 year old had very little to no ethanol aroma, despite the high proof. I mean, this doesn't smell like alcohol at all. Um, it, it's that well done. So I'm very excited to try this. See how it tastes. Nuts, vanilla, sherry. The sherry is almost like a fruit cake. It's um, it's like a lot of different fruits kind of flavors going on there. A lot more of a oaky presence than in the twelve. A little bit of maybe a toffee, turning into some chocolate at the end and that is, that's a really nice dram it's not as exciting as the 12 year old because the 12 year old I think has a lot more punch to it uh, from the younger age with the high proof but this um, this is just so much more refined um, so if you like the 12 year old, I think there's nothing you couldn't like about this. Um, I will say it's not, it's not beating you over the head with flavor as much as the 12 though, because the 12 almost seems richer, um, just because it's got a little more bite to it and power. But I mean, this is just so harmonious, um, with the flavors that are going on here. That's a truly fantastic whiskey. Man, I'm getting, yeah, it's not orange, it's it's more like a, that honey, but man, I really like this. So the problem that I'm gonna have with this though is how much better is it than the 12? Because I think the 12 represents such a good value for your money um, it's hard to say that this is twice as good, um, when it costs twice as much. That being said, however, um, this is about a hundred dollars and most 18 year olds, um, are creeping up to the 130 plus range at this point. Um, you still got a few guys like Glenn Fiddick and Glenn Morgy that are staying at 100 and below, but many of the distillery's 18-year-old expressions have well exceeded the $100 price point. So in that regard, directly compared to its competitors, I think this is fantastic value. Um, you're getting the flavors of an older whiskey, um, you're getting the maturity of it, the integration of the flavors, um, and you're getting it at a reasonable, if, and you can call $100 reasonable, um, price point relative to most of its competition. The only issue is that Bunahaven makes such a good 12 year old that, um, that, that really makes it a hard, uh, hard thing to justify, but it is much better than the 12. So if, um, if you like the 12 and you're looking for an 18 year old whiskey to purchase, I highly recommend this. Um, 
I really, really like it. I'm going to give this an A. Um, I think it's a solid A. I can't quite decide on giving it a plus, you know, for value relative to its competition, um, be simply because I think Bunahaven has kind of spoiled themselves by making such a good 12-year-old. So while this is much better than the 12, in my opinion, um, the 12 is... I don't know. They're different. The 12 is much more towards the sherry, and the 18 brings in a lot of other flavors, like the heather, or not heather, honeys, um, and nuttiness, and slight chocolate finish, and oak. Um, so really, you kind of have to decide what you want there. Do you want the more exciting, younger whiskey that's um, much more flavorful, or do you want the balanced, uh, more complex, older whiskey? And Ultimately, I think I want both of them, so I'm going to have both of them on my shelf um, if you can afford that. Uh, if if you really have to worry about the price at all, stick with the 12. Um, but if you're looking for a nicer special occasion whiskey, um, something in the $100 price point, I can highly recommend this. Um, I think it's fantastic stuff. So as always, please click that subscribe button. That helps me out a lot. Thank you guys for watching. Cheers.